It was a good Sunday for our coaches on opposite sides of the country. They know how to turn in a thriller at the MCG, the Pies. And again in the driving rain yesterday, successful over the Hawks to mount their case. They are dreaming in the stands at Fremantle and will they should, given what they're watching on the field. The quality of the Dockers is right before us in consecutive weeks. So they are at the forefront of the conversation as the coach of the year. I'd put to you that they are the Quinella over in the West. Justin Longmuir. Justin, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, lads. Justin, we love the art of coaching here, and I wondered if we might ponder... These stories are always told in hindsight. What was in your mind two weeks ago at the press conference when you spoke of a club getting ahead of itself? I was probably directed at everyone to do with the football club, um, inside the four walls and outside the four walls. And... Um, yeah, I just thought that we'd taken our eyes off the ball just a, just a smidge. And um, like I said, in that press conference, it doesn't take much for you, your game to be off. And um, when you're sitting up near the top of the ladder, teams come with a you know, re, you know more vigour and, and um, you know, give it their best shot and you don't have to be much off. So um, we just needed to recalibrate calibrate a little bit. Um, not much because I, I don't feel like it was, um, you know, real bad, but... Um, it was just about getting back to having that edge about us and, and playing with the sort of intensity that Collingwood brought on that day. Um, you know, I, I thought in the conditions, a lot talked about the conditions, but I thought Collingwood played with a with more vigour and uh, more intensity than us, and that's what we had been doing to teams um, previous. So once you've said it and then you wait to see what the reaction is going to be, to tell us uh, how do you feel about the reaction that you got from that? Oh, well, the players rocked up to work on, um, yeah, Monday after the game and they were, you know, really, um, you know, keen to get to work. Um, once uh, once we'd sort of had the review straight after the game, we, we sort of had a six-day break and approached the Melbourne game um, trying to get back to our best. And we had had a couple of wet games the, week bef uh, the two weeks before and um, we knew that the conditions were going to be um, pretty good against Melbourne. So we, we tried to um, reset our focus to get back to what we do really well. And a lot of it was based around getting our mojo back with the ball. And um, yeah, the, the team review that week um, focused a little bit on the Collingwood game, but it was mainly projecting forward into um, the Melbourne game and what we um, needed to do. And largely it was based around getting back to our best um, with and without the footy. We are talking earlier, Justin, about your recruiting and your, and your trading in and getting players from opposition clubs. And I listed four. H. Collier, Brody and Blake Akers, who were just going up and down at their previous clubs. What, what have you and what have they and what is the environment... What, what have you supplied them to get the best out of themselves? Oh, I think it's just about... Um First and foremost, welcoming to the, welcoming them to the football club and wrapping our arms around them and um, setting them a path into the team um, and, and with a real uh, clear focus on what their role is going to be. Um, obviously, you know, Aishi I'd worked with at Collingwood and I knew he was a really flexible player, so he's he's been a bit of a Mr. Fix It um, for us. But the others have just had really clearly defi uh, defined roles and. Um, roles, I think, which allows them allows them all to play to their strengths and um, you know, bring their, their strengths to the table. And yeah, I suppose backing them in and um, you know, giving them a pathway um, forward. And um, yeah, they've all done done a really good job job for the team. And I think it's been uh, the highlight of our of our wins in particular this year is we've just had a really even contribution, and our players are understanding that they don't have to go above and beyond. Um, their role. All they need to do is execute the role to the best of their ability and if we get, um, you know, 18 guys on the field any one time executing their role, good things can happen. So, um, you know, there's been a few players that have, you know, really performed really well, but I, I think we've had a really even contribution um, across the board. Justin, is uh, ambition is one thing. It's got to be grounded, and yours is absolutely grounded. So if we used last year's benchmark of the, the champion team in Melbourne, opposition scores per inside 50, uh, the defensive 50 to inside 50, pressure, midfield intercepts, and the overall rank, and you compare incredibly favourably, how, how honed is your game at the moment? 
Well, it's it's never perfect, Jared. And um, I think we saw on the weekend, um, you know, we conceded some scores late in the game, and I thought Brisbane were able to transition the ball pretty easily out of their out of their D50. So, um, which is something we've been really good at. So, there's always areas of the game that aren't perfect. Or very rarely you play a perfect game. So. We feel like we're in a good space. Um, I, th- I feel like our, our players really understand uh, the game plan um, and what their role or what, what part their role plays in our game plan. And that's taken a fair bit of time to, to build. Um, we've had a bit of a rotating door over the last couple of years with you know injuries and, and people coming, uh, players coming in and out of our side. And I feel like this is the first year we've, in the last you know, probably four or five at the club, to be honest, where we've had a consistent group of players playing together week in, week out. And, um, yeah, we're starting to build that chemistry amongst each other and um, yeah, I think they've got a really good understanding of how our offence and defence complement each other and how important the contest is in everything we do. I don't suspect you're a, a big headline maker. Justin, in all the years you've been coaching, I haven't seen you screaming headlines with your comments. But at 9-3 at the halfway mark, <laughs> at the halfway mark of the year, do you believe that your team can win the Premiership this year? And just more importantly, does your team, does your players believe that they can win the Premiership this year? Well, hopefully they believe in the system. Hopefully they believe in the process, Robbo. Um, and you know, I'm not going to make any sweeping headlines about what you know is going to happen in you know 10, 12, you know 15 weeks' time. It, it really is about um, you know building a, a brand of footy that allows us to compete at the pointy end of the year. I've never I've never shied away from that. I, as everyone in the co- in the football world is here to play deep into finals, and um, I've never shied away from that. Um, but we've you know really stuck to the process as a footy club, and I think you know I, I said after the game that you know our players should start believing, or they should really start believing in the process they're implementing week in week out. Um, and and believing in the in the system we're playing and the fact that it takes you know every every person on our list um you know swimming in the same direction so um yeah i'm not going to get carried away with any of those sweeping statements mate it'll be on the front page of the west tomorrow <laughs> that's okay the answer is yes but you said it really really <laughs> nice. you said it really nicely but that's the confidence of what you're doing now can i ask you not so much the same question but do you talk to your players? Are you a kind of coach you go week by week, or do you talk to your players now? Hey, look what's happening. We are giving ourselves, as Justin just spoke about, an opportunity here. And guess what? You never, ever know in this sport we call Australian rules. Yeah. I think Flag Mantle's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> Flag Mantle. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was it. That was the cue that tipped you over the top. I'm absolutely sure of it. <laughs> uh, you're right there, Jared. You're the first one to pick up on that. That was the um, over the top moment for me. Yeah, I got asked whether I was getting a tattoo or not. Yeah. <laughs> Nat Fife was on couch, Justin. What, what did you think watching him play for Peel? Yeah, I thought it was the right decision watching him. He was a little bit rusty early on and uh, as expected, and he expected, that, you know, he built into the game really well. And I think he gained a lot of confidence out of that, not just in his um, footy ability um, and, and getting back to his best there, but I think he got a lot of confidence out of his body as well. Um, he took some big hits in that game um, and got up after each of them and, you know, shrugged them off and got on with the, on with the business. So he will take a lot of um, belief out of that game. Are you ready to play him? Yeah, we're pretty confident he'll be right to come back into the team this week. Um, you know, my conversations with him, with him, and my thoughts in the back of my mind all along was that he only needed one game, and I don't think anything changed out of watching him on the weekend. How do you reintegrate him? So he's spoken around. He does expect to be rusty for a period of time. How does a coach work that with a champion player back in his lineup? Oh, it's yeah, it's about getting him back to what he does best um, and, and making sure we've, you know, we get the, the balance right and the, and the role right that allows him to go to work at stoppage um, and then spend some time forward and, and bring his aerial into the game. So, yeah, we'll keep working on that balance throughout the week and, um, you know, he'll get his first crack at it this weekend. Justin, what's your routine? Do you give one last rev up um, before you send the players out? So the point of reference here was on Friday night, Chris Scott uh, was came over to do the Fox footy interview and he finished up as the players were running out. So whatever he'd done was well before that last cliched moment of get him around and give him a rev. What, what's your routine? 
No, I'll talk to the players about an hour out from game game time. And really, it's about getting making sure that their head's in the game and we go over our focus points and talk about the things that we've probably already spoken about two or three times throughout the week, to be honest. And then um, I hand it over to the players. And that's the captain's job, um, that final speech before they go out on the ground. So, yeah, I, I hand it over to the, the players um, post my meeting. We'll see you on Saturday, Justin. Thanks a lot for your time tonight and good luck. Thanks, lads. Appreciate it. And it'll be next Monday, the Queen's birthday, the next big occasion for the Ooh, Pies. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Craig Thanks, McRae, Craig. Justin Longmuir with us on Coaches Night. Players Night tomorrow.